morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to Spokane Dream Center. Welcome to Sunday School. It's a, a blessing, an honor, and a privilege. My name is Josh Maltzberger. This is, can you say your name? Joanna Maltzberger. Joanna Maltzberger. <laughs> this is my daughter, yes. And she's up here. We're, uh, uh, we're up here. JoJo is uh, job shadowing me right now, I think. So she's watching what I'm doing, and she's uh, encouraged. She has a testimony this morning, so... As we uh, enter in, and I'm going to give something brief after this, but JoJo would like to lead us all off by giving us a testimony or two, okay? Are you ready to do it? Yeah. Okay. So let them know what happened. What has God done? You don't want to? You don't want to say it? Are you sure? Just tell them. It's really easy. You can do it. You want me to tell him? Okay, well, I'll tell him. So, JoJo and Samuel, now you've probably already heard this testimony, but that's okay. It's okay to give your testimony more than once in your life. It's good. <laughs> in fact, the longer you walk with the Lord, you're going to have multiple opportunities to give your testimonies away, and God's going to use those miraculous, wonderful things that he's done in your life to minister to other people. So, JoJo and Samuel, uh, they've grown up with our dog, Reggie, who is uh, a blessing, and he has been with us for 19 years, and he's had cherry eyes, if you're familiar with that, for the last few years, four or five years. He's struggled with these uh, kind of growth abscesses on his eyeballs, around his eyeballs, and they will pray for him daily, every day, for these cherry eyes to go away. And a few months ago, we woke up one day, and that cherry eye was what? Was it gone? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so God had healed, you know, God had heard the prayers of uh, my children and, and moved on their behalf on, the, on behalf of a dog. So I, I don't know the ends and the limits and the uh, extent of God's grace and mercy and his love. It's really incredible. Um, there you go. Yeah, hi, there's mom. Um, so what was your other testimony? What did you get to start this last week? Look at them and tell them. Look at them. The ball doesn't want to know. They want to know. Where did you get to start? I get to start ballet. Ballet. Yeah. Okay. And who provided that opportunity? God. God did. Yeah. Amen. Okay. Thank you so much, Joanna. Can you go sit down with Mom now? No. No? You want to stay up here? <laughs> okay. All right. Well, let's see if we can do this. Here we go. That's all right. I'm not going to be up here for very long. Um, but I do have, I want to pray for us, and I want to enter in here. I've got a couple scriptures, a couple quotes, and then I've got one testimony, and I'm going to get out of the way, I promise, because so, I know I can just see it on your faces. You're eager, so you're going to be jumping over one another to get up here and give away your testimony. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. God, we thank you and we praise you. We honor and glorify the name that is above every other name, the name of Jesus, our Lord, our Savior. This morning we come to testify of the goodness of God. Lord, how you have moved and brought us deliverance from the punishment and the wrath of God. You've brought us out of that and into the blessing of God, the life of God. You've been we've been reconciled to you through the work of Jesus Christ, through his death burial, and resurrection, Lord, on our behalf. And we thank you that you've moved by the Holy Spirit to draw us to this truth and give us this gift, this opportunity to repent of our sins, Lord, and be forgiven and inherit eternal life. God, we all have a testimony. If, that, if we can say that about you, that is the testimony, Lord, and we are thankful and grateful for that this morning. But you do so much in our lives, Lord. You provide for us like Joanna, you provided her with the uh, desire of her heart to be in ballet. God, you heal us. You heal our disease, our infirmity. God, you heal our hearts. You heal our minds and you renew them. God, you restore our families and brokenness in every area of our life. God, you provide us with breakthroughs in, in, in those seasons when we feel like we're not growing, we're not thriving, we're just, you know, stagnant. You provide a breakthrough. Something for us to be encouraged and stimulated by, Lord. And we're thankful for that. We want to tell these things to one another. 
so that we can stimulate and exhort one another to continue fighting the good fight, to continue holding on to their faith and walking it out. So as we read a few scriptures and consider your goodness, your holiness, your favor that you've extended to us, Lord, God, I just pray that you would stir up within the hearts and souls and minds of your saints these good, wonderful things that you've done that we might encourage one another in you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay, so, all right, I've got a couple scriptures, but I have one testimony that I want to give away first. Uh, this just happened in the last week or so, and it's just a testimony to your character, your countenance, your just your faithfulness to God. You don't know how, you know, we say it, we, we're living out the gospel. We, we proclaim it in how we uh, how we live, but also how we speak. And so I've had the opportunity at uh, the, my place of work, Gold Seal, to, uh, to have apprentices come back into the shop where I work, and they'll send them, they're starting to send them back there to me first to learn the parts, to get familiar with some things, and then go out into the field with their journeymen. And so I ha I've had a couple in the last month or so, and one guy about three weeks ago came back there, and he was only with me for about two days, two or three days. And, uh, but in that time, I got to ask him, and I got to do my job with him, but I also got to talk with him about my testimony and where I've come from and where I am now and the author of that testimony, Jesus Christ. And I've talked with him about my relationship with the word, my relationship with my church, you know, and I don't, I didn't know where he stood with God or anything else. He didn't tell me. And then he came in this last week and I said, hey, How's it going? How was your day? You know, he was done with his job, and he came back there to hang out with me for half an hour. And I said, what do you, you got big plans for the day? And he said, I'm going to go home and read a couple chapters out of John. You know, yeah. he said, I've really been uh, strained from the word, and I haven't, been, I haven't been feeding off of the word. And I know I need it in these times that are so dark around us. Yeah, I didn't, do, I didn't, all I did was tell him about what God had done in my life. And it stimulated him. He might, he may have had a walk with the Lord before. Maybe he, you know, maybe he grew up in church, but maybe he's coming to the realization that he's either come to his own walk with the Lord, or maybe he's got to strengthen his walk with the Lord. I don't know. I don't know exactly where he's at, but I'm just grateful to hear that report. And you don't hear that report all the time. Sometimes you might hear like, whoa, you know, they'll for, they, they won't even respond to anything you say about deliverance. They'll just go, oh boy, you were a, you were a drug addict. You were this. You were that. That's the only thing they hear. That's okay. That doesn't mean don't say it. Speak it out. You never know how God is going to do it. So to continue to the, sow those seeds. Um, so, Hebrews, I told I, I listed a couple of scriptures as I was trying to get out of here last Sunday. I just want to highlight two of them here. Hebrews chapter 10 and verses 23 through 25. Okay. You read it, Jojo. No, that's okay. Yeah, I know you're not quite there yet. Okay, so let us seize and hold fast and retain without wavering the hope we cherish and confess. We cherish it, this hope, and we confess it. And our acknowledgement of it. That's what you have an opportunity to come up and do today. For he who promised is reliable sure and faithful to his word and let us consider and give attention sorry attentive continuous care to watching over one another studying how we may stir up stimulate and incite to love and helpful deeds and noble activities that's the result of what we come together as the body of christ to do in on our weekly basis you know however However the church comes together, that's, why we, that's part of why we come together, and that's what happens when we come together. We can take care of one another, watch over one another, studying how can I utilize something God has done in my life to witness and, and, and minister to those around me because they're going through the similar things that I've been through. And that will stimulate people to love and helpful deeds, and those are the things that help assure us of our salvation. When you're walking it out in your own life. In verse 25, not forsaking or neglecting to assemble together as believers, as is the habit of some people, but admonishing, warning, urging, and encouraging one another, and all the more faithfully as you see the day approaching. Jesus is coming back. 
I don't know exactly when he's coming back, but we're closer to him coming back. And, you know, it says the closer we get, the more we should be doing these things. So here we are today, and we're going to do it. Amen? Psalm 105, verses 1 through 5. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. That's what you have an opportunity to do this morning. You can just step up here and give him thanks. Joanna said, you know, God was the one that gave her the ability to go into ballet. That's something to give thanks for. We have all have something to give God thanks for. Call upon his name. Maybe you didn't call Jesus your Lord before. You can come up here and pronounce and proclaim the name of Jesus over your life as Lord and Savior. Make known his doings among the peoples. What has he done in your life that you can make known amongst us, your brothers and sisters in Christ, and even outside of here, to the peoples around the world? Sing to him, sing praises to him, meditate on and talk of all his marvelous deeds, and devoutly praise them. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek and require the Lord as their indispensable necessity. Seek, inquire of, and for the Lord, and crave him and his strength, his might, and inflexibility to temptation. Seek and require his face and his presence continually evermore. So you've got an opportunity this morning to come up and walk out the themes that the psalmist was describing in Psalm 105. You have the opportunity to do that every day, but <laughs> we're not going to read that one this morning, okay? But we'll read that one at home. Now, I've got a couple, just a couple of quotes about testimonies. I gave you a couple last week, but these are really good. It says, Only God, on, only God can turn a mess into a message, a test into a testimony, a trial into a triumph, and a victim into victory. All of us have been on one end of that. You've had a mess in your life that God has moved upon and cleaned up. He is the world's, the universe's greatest janitor. Um, a test into a testimony. And without a test, without a test, you know, all you have is a money. You've heard that, of course, but we all get tested. You heard about my test and our test in our family last week. I'm not going to go into that this week again. A trial into a triumph, where you will have victory, Lord. Thank you. And a victim into a victory. And all of us have been victims of some sort of outside affliction in our life, something we didn't deserve. We've all also induced, self-induced, you know, affliction. Um, but God is still the answer to heal both of those. So if God has healed you and made you his victory, Come up here and let us know that he might be glorified. Now, I've got two more. The flame of testimony burns brightly when God, when fed with the oil of grace. And if lips and life do not agree, the testimony will not amount to much. It's Harry Ironside. Those are not my quotes, but I thought they were really good. So, Ready? Okay, Heavenly Father, I just pray, Lord, as we consider all of these things, Lord, and what you've done in our life, as we meditate on the goodness of God, and we rejoice in the mighty works that you've accomplished, Lord, throughout all of time, but personally, individually, in all of our lives, God, I just pray that you would help us to really revel in these things and uh, be so excited and encouraged by them that we just want to let others know that we can shout it from the mountain that Jesus Christ is Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now, okay, go walk back. Come on, we'll be right there. Okay, so the, the parameters, some of the guidelines, and there's not many for testimonies, but we're going to be doing testimonies for a few weeks. And so you will, you will have an opportunity to give your testimony. Um, that being said, there's, you know, 40 or 45, I don't know, there's a few of us here. So we can't take up the whole time to give our testimony or we'll be here for nearly a year so we're planning on doing it for like three to four weeks you know or however long we need uh, to give away our testimony and that's wonderful but uh, just be considerate we want to hear your testimony but there's somebody else who's burning got a desire you know in their heart to give their testimony as well so just make sure that you consider that we we end at a quarter till so if you're up here and you're one of the people towards the end 
You know, I know it's hard and you're nervous and it's, you're, you're giving away your testimony and I, you don't want to think about the time. I totally understand. Um, but, and if you don't and you're starting to go over, if I raise my hand or something, you know, don't be discouraged. It's just we have a time to stop and, uh, and start again next week. Um, we're here to glorify the name above every name, Jesus Christ. We're here to glorify God. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. What that sin looks like for all of us can vary. And it's okay to let us know about the darkness that you were in, but we don't want to focus on the darkness that held us down. We want to proclaim the goodness of God that brought us out of that darkness and into his marvelous light. So we're not here to trade stories about how dark our darkness was, you know, and make that into a, a competition. You know, I'll just, I'll yield right now. Maybe you were, had greater darkness than me. I don't want to get into that battle. I want to talk about the one that brought me out, gave me new life. Amen. So let's glorify Jesus Christ throughout our testimonies. You can give testimony of, you know, like I said, I, I tried to pray through and talk through some of the themes uh, that, that the Lord does and has done. Um, you know, you have the testimony, of course, which we talked about, <clears throat> the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you are saved truly and been redeemed, you have a testimony. That can't happen that's the, by the grace of God. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. It's the completed work of Christ, and it was the thoughtful work of God before the foundation of the world. So you have a testimony if you're included in his family. So Christ brings us salvation, but he also provides for us. He protects us. He restores in our lives. He, he does miracles in our lives. He provides deliverance, healing, breakthroughs, and really so much more. If we're in, in step with him, we see it on a daily basis. So, I'm trying to think if there's any other, yeah. Please state your name. Is he come up? We want to know who you are. As we talked about, you know, at men's group, um, which Darwin was there. So I guess Darwin, this is for you. <laughs> You'll remember this. But uh, but in from the beginning, and even we were going through Genesis chapter five, and we were we were going through some genealogies from Adam to Noah, and then we looked at you know uh, Enoch. But the interesting thing about it is that you know every, there's a name. There's not a whole lot said about a lot of those guys. It's, you know, this guy and you know was born and then he died. But God knew his name. <laughs> he, had a, he had an appointed time to live and an appointed time to die. God, God knows your name. If you don't know that, God knows you by name. He's not some weird, mystical spirit up in Never Never Land that sees everything but doesn't, you know, care. He cares. He's all-knowing. He's all-powerful. And he sees you, he knows you, and like Jesus called Lazarus out of the tomb, one day he's going to call you by name into glory with him. But he knows your name today, but we don't know your name sometimes, so let us know your name. <laughs> let us know your name. My name's Josh. Um, so just start it off by letting us know who you are. You're known. One of the greatest uh, obstacles in life that people face and it leads to all sorts of depression and anxiety and different things is that uh, not being known. That's why I try to get to know people's names. I'd encourage you in your life, your walk, if you're, and you will be in ministry. If you're in Christ, you're called into some form of ministry, even if it's your own family, your workplace, whatever it is. Get to know people by name. You don't know how much impact that makes, you know, when, a, when just somebody, co-worker, I think it could just be a co-worker, they're, you're not just guy to them. Hey, guy. Hey, 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 dude. Hey, apprentice. Hey, you know, you got a name. When you got a name, I, you know, it means that you have value, you have worth when you got a name. Okay, so you all have a name, and we'd like to know it. So um, that's it. If I think of anything else, I'll just stop everybody and bring it to a grinding halt and let you know. I love you guys very much, so... Be encouraged and encourage us.
telling you up here how much I <laughs> My name is Darwin Drews. I've been to the program with a lot of the men. And when I went in, my, my testimony is God can do anything. And God taught me how to read. The Bible taught me how to read. I mean, my, my reading was so horrible. But once, I mean, down the road, I, I can read good. And that's all because of the Holy Spirit and what he does. Morning, y'all. So, my testimony is one of deliverance from anger and vengeance. I used to be a very hateful and vengeful person, and there's a there's a lot I could say about the story, but I'm going to condense it down a lot. Um, I, I just I always felt like an outcast and was pretty was bullied a lot throughout my whole life, but. And I decided one day that I was going to take out my revenge and my hatred on all of those people that, you know, bullied me and made me feel like I was nothing. And one day after all of that, you know, much betrayal and much hurting of other people, I, um, it just came to me that I, I was being more hateful than those people were. <laughs> and I remember I didn't really have a really great relationship with the Lord. I believed in God, but didn't really know if he was real or not. But one day I was laying on my bed and I just asked God, I said, if, if you're real, you're going to have to show yourself to me because I, I don't want to live like this. I don't want to live in hatred. And, you know, and what he told me to do was go and, and apologize to all those people. And one day I did that. And I had a lot of enemies, I made a lot of enemies, and I watched them all scatter, and I watched them all forgive me, and it was an amazing move of God to just see that instead of deserving the beat down that I probably should have received, I received mercy instead, and it was just, it was a beautiful thing, and I remember a few days after that, I received the verse that I always live by now, is First John 4.20, you hate a brother and you say you love God, you're a liar. And just, I live with that every single day now as my golden standard. And I just praise God because He delivered me from such a hateful heart. And now I just, I want to love. So thank you, Jesus. My name is Tiffany. I went through the program. I'm in transition. Um, I have a new life. I have a new family. Um, I'm a new creation in Christ, and I thank the Lord.
Good morning. My name is Paul Fitzhugh. If the shoe fits you, <laughs> you said it right. Okay. I told Josh this morning, he asked me if I had a testimony, and I just, you know, I got a lot of testimonies. And he says, good. But I says, I'm going to listen to these guys today. What am I doing up here? Because you guys are pretty slow. I know each and every one of you. I know each and every one of you have testimonies, as I do. You know, when I was a little kid, about the size of Samuel, I went to a Baptist church, and my mother and father took them and us six kids with them every Sunday, Sunday night, and Wednesday. When the Wednesday was the Bible study. And the preacher, when he got done with his sermon, George Snickenberger, I still remember his name, and that's amazing because I apologize to everyone in here. I can't remember names. I never have been able to. And I did just like Josh said earlier, if I, if I go in and see somebody, I say, hi, how you doing? I'm, you know, and that, act like I know them, and I never even bring the name up. And I know it's disrespectful. Believe me, I know that. But he hasn't healed me from that yet. I know that he can. I know that he probably will. But anyway, after church, Pastor Schneckenberger said, Okay, um, all that want to be saved, raise your hand. And I raised my hand. And I went up there. He took me in his office. And he told me about God. And I had this most beautiful, warm spot in my heart. It was amazing. I never felt like that before. Boy, it felt good. Next Sunday, I did the same thing. And I went in, talked to him. I got this wonderful feeling again. Again. And I did that about three or four Sundays in a row. And finally, Pastor George says to me, Paul, he says, what's going on? I says, oh, nothing. And he says, well, why do you keep coming up? And I says, because when you bring me into your office here and we talk, I get this wonderful feeling in my heart. And I love it. And I'm addicted to it. I want it forever. Forever. Well, he gave me, he let me know he was there. He didn't give it to me forever. But I do know that there is a God. And I do know that Jesus took every one of my sins and got rid of them. He's let me know many, many times. Because there's at least seven times I could give you today that I should not be here. I should not be here. I should be drowned in Alta Lake. I should be drowned in a cesspool. I should be ran over by a train. I should have been shot by a drug dealer. And lo and behold, here I am. Now who do you give that credit to? God. And I love him so much. So much. I never want to be without him. Because he is my future. I don't know where I'm going to go, but I'm going to go with him.
Um, I want to testify to real hope, uh, not just a positive affirmation or a good feeling, you know, hey, there's hope in Jesus, sure is, bud, you know, but I wanted that to be manifested actual, actually in my life, um, to be a living definition of what it means to have the real hope of Jesus Christ, um, and to be able to say it and mean it, and actually mean it. I like to keep it real. I want to be able to say it and uh, not feel like I'm just trying to be positive when deep inside I'm being negative, you know? Um, I don't like that kind of stuff. Um, so i am kind of got a life of Job right now. Um, the past few months I've lost a lot, like a lot. Uh, in May I had a house, wife, kids, nice job, nice truck, everything a man could want, plus some. Garage full of tool, everything, you know, not it's all carnal stuff, but I mean, I had the life, like I had the life, it was awesome. Um, and when I came to Dream Center on July 19th, I had nothing but the clothes on my back. Um, at the end of this month, I might be signing divorce papers. I'm fighting custody for my kids right now. I got a whole bunch of stuff going. I have the sciatic nerve. You see me walking with a lamp, that's new. Like I've never done that. Like Joe, I'm telling you, boils the whole shebang. Um, and so if anyone had a reason to not be hopeful, I could use those excuses. I could. I could wake up and be super negative, which sometimes I struggle with. Or I could have just left the program or not came in at all. Or I could still be sitting in the hotel room doing my thing, you know. Could be if I wanted to. Um, but I can honestly say that I wake up in the morning. I might take a cup of coffee at first, but I wake up every morning very hopeful that there's glory on the other side of this. And I really do. I'm, I w if it wasn't true, I wouldn't say it. I'm not that type of person. I know for certain that Jesus Christ, right, what did we say the other morning? Um, everything's worked good for those who love him. I know I love him, and I know he loved me only because he loves me first. I can't possibly love him if I didn't feel like he didn't love me first, and that's how it makes sense to me. So I wake up every morning, I'm like, oh, I don't want to get up. But the Jesus <laughs> enters, <laughs> but he enters me, and he says, get up, son. There's more going I'm like, for what, though? What's the purpose? He says, I have purpose. I said, but well, what is it? He says, don't trip on it, bro. I'll tell you later. I'm like, all right. <laughs> Jeez, quit yelling at me. Get a cup of coffee, man. That's just how we talk sometimes. You know, I'm being funny. But um, like I said, if anyone, my name's Jacob, by the way. So if anyone I wanted to use uh, circumstances to be negative, I could. Um, but I choose not to. And it's not because of my own doing, because I'm a pretty weak-natured uh, man, very addictive personality. Um, I do it because I have laid my life down, I believe. I believe I have laid my life down um, and given it to the Lord, and I believe he has entered me, and we're going to do something big. I believe that there's glory on the other side of this. So if anyone's wanting to be negative or, you know, uh, feel like they're hopeless, they're like, oh, I've lost too much, or maybe you're getting up there in age and you're like, I'm already 40, you know, I don't know, or any of that kind of stuff. I'm, it is a lie. I'm being hopeful. All y'all are going to be hopeful, period. We're going to get through it together. And that is a testimony to the spirit of Jesus Christ. It really is. Jesus. 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 It's Jesus. It's so easy to be negative. So I just wanted to testify to real hope. Not a positive affirmation. Not a good feeling. Not to a Christian quip from the lip. I'm talking real positivity and real hope. So I just want to testify to the hope in Jesus Christ. Amen. Hey guys, my name is Derek Reed. Uh, Jacob, you made me cry and get fired up and within the span of like two seconds. I uh, love you, man, and, and you are a testament to the faithfulness of Christ. And uh, It's not the first time I've stood up here, um, but my testimony kind of remains the same. It's about God's faithfulness and, and healing brokenness in my life that it is, is from a very young age. And uh, it has a lot to do with what Josh talked about, about uh, feeling alone or feeling like you, you don't matter. Uh, you talked about having a name. and um, You know, I, I dealt with abandonment issues my whole life, and I'm be 46 this next year, and it's tough to admit that that's a real thing, but it is. And, uh, you know, God has delivered me out of some, some horrific things, including depression and anxiety and uh, any medication and pill you can imagine in the course of my life I've taken. Uh, but about seven years ago, I called the Dream Center, and uh, I was told that I have to throw all those things in the garbage can. And 
the crazy thing is the Lord gave me the faith at that time to do it and respond. And I, I've really never turned back to that in, in a course of seven years. But healing a broken heart um, has taken a long time. You know, it's caused me to run from love. It's caused me to run from God's blessing. And um, I've been extremely blessed with my in my walk with Jesus. Um, but responding to that comfortably has been really hard for me to do. Um, and it's caused me to run from this church, which I love. This is the first church I ever went to in my entire life, more than once. Uh, I consider everybody here my family, but I did what I've always done is I get weirded out and I ran. Uh, but God gave me the grace this year to come back and, and really, I believe, get back in alignment with where he desires me to be. So my testimony is God's faithfulness. My testimony is God's um, willingness to finish the work that he starts. It's what I admire most about God because not many people I know have that ability to do always what they say they're going to do. And God is that. Jesus has been that for me my whole life. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's a beautiful thing. And, and uh, like Jacob said, it, we have a living hope in Christ that the world doesn't have. So um, I prayed before we came here and I prayed for courage and, and thank, thankfully to Jacob's infectious uh, love for Jesus, he got me up here. So I just encourage you guys to do the same and just testify to the, the glory of a new life in Christ. So appreciate you guys. Hi, I'm Joe. Um, Paul, you kind of like challenged me to come up here. <laughs> um, so I have been in the program two times. What's your name? Joe. Joe. Yeah. You know that. Yeah. So, so anyways, yeah, I've been in the program two times, um, graduated two times, and I'm interning right now, and I, I love it. Um, and I really believe the first time that I went through the program, I, I learned to, to trust leadership and to, to listen to counsel and uh, kind of just deviated from that uh, when I did move on to the transition house. And, um, this time around, it's a little bit different for me. I, I learned how to uh, kind of take things to God. It was crazy. It was, it was like I was so prone to just going to my leaders and expressing it to them, but then leaving it there and not taking it back to God in my room. Um, but I really, really thank you thank you to God that I, I was able to do that um, this time around. Because what it's done for me is given me a quality of life that I never really had. Um, I tried to do that with things and kind of mask hurts and stuff like that, and I'd end up using like substances to... to mask those inner hurts that I didn't really want to face but it's like I have somewhere to take it now it's, it's to God and it's it's a process I'm not all the way there but it certainly does improve my quality of life and it's getting me there to where I can love others and stuff and I don't know I'm just really excited for what God has for me because uh yeah for once I'm actually really excited and without a care for the future you know it's really wonderful um and also I had to throw this one in there and my football team, Ohio State, stomped out Notre Dame yesterday, so I'll testify to that. Name's Trevon. I just wanted to just uh, just give this testimony real quick. So I used to be a person with a lot of anxiety and stuff like that, and um, <clears throat> the Lord's been delivering me from that. You know what I mean? Like every single time I get up, like if it's on a prayer night or anything like that, you know, the only reason why I'm really even able to do so is because it's the Lord's strength inside of me. Because that's not something that I really want to do. I don't like to be the one who stands out or anything like that. 
And just, you know, also I was going to say just what a blessing it is just to wake up with the Lord and just to know that he's in my life. You know, I never used to feel the Lord's presence when I wasn't following him. And just to be, just knowing that I'm in the center of his will right now and where he wants me to be, it's amazing. It's, it's nothing that I could even compare with. Um, <clears throat> I'm not perfect. I'm, I'm striving for it. I'm trying to be a better me. I do fall short sometimes, but just to know that the Lord Jesus Christ loves me and has a plan and a purpose not only for me, but for all of you as well. He knows, like Josh said, he knows you by name. Every hair on your head, he knows it before he created the foundations of the, of the earth. You know, he, he thought about all of us. <clears throat> he hand-knitted us in our mother's womb, and that's just... It's just amazing when you really think about that. You know, I'm really just getting that revelation of just how much Jesus really loves me and the things that he's done for me. But in Matthew 5, um, 14 and through 16, it says, You are the light of the world, a city, a city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Nor does anyone light a lamp and put under a basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. And it says, Let your light shine before men in such a way that they see your good works. And glorify your Father who is in heaven. And um, one of the other days on a, on a prayer night, Pastor Vince, you know, like when I prayed for all of them to be sick, <clears throat> something that he said to me it just really stuck out. He just said, he said, it's not about you anymore. It's not about me. It's, just, it's about just what Jesus is doing inside of me. And I have to decrease so Jesus can increase. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm here to glorify Jesus Christ, not myself. And I just pray that. I just want you to know I pray for all of you guys yeah, every single day, the women and the men's discipleship, the people in the congregation. I just pray that we all get it. I want to see y'all in heaven because we're all family. You know what I mean? I love you guys. Good morning. And thank you. All right. Well, whoo. I was afraid the ball wasn't going to get rolling there for a minute. <laughs> I was like, I don't have a full message prepared here. It's going to be all you, Holy Spirit. So, And it's supposed to be all him anyway. But uh, thank you for each and every person who came up and glorified Jesus Christ. And, you know, it just, it takes courage. I just want to, you know, give you some honor. You know, it does take courage to stand up in front of your peers. And, you know, especially when we've battled and dealt with, insecurities and uh, and all of those things and all of us have to some degree um, and I know I have I'll tell you what you I sat in these seats just like you wearing a black shirt being the guy that was I mean I wasn't known and I was trying to not be known I did I did you know I didn't want to step up here but I was so thankful for what God had done in my life I felt compelled to stand up and just tell people what he did and that was the start. That was the first time I got in front of a pulpit, just like this, and just gave my testimony. And then it took maybe seven years before I was up here teaching anything. But you know what I mean? It's just, it's a progress. It all starts with just in your heart, do you love Jesus? Are you thankful for what he's provided? Are you thankful enough to tell somebody about it? And then eventually he's going to grow you. Like, like Trevon was saying, you know, he... He has our whole life in the palm of his hand. He knows every hair on your head. He's, pre he, he's planned before the foundation of time every good work for you to walk in. He's given you his Holy Spirit to empower you, to lead you, guide you, direct you, and enable you, empower you to do each and every good work. That the world might see you are the light of the world. You are a city set on a hill. You're not, see, but what Trevon was saying is, I'm not up here to be the light, to show you I'm the light. I just, that's what Jesus says I am. It's going to be revealed. It's going to be seen by the world whether you like it or not. It's just in you. It's who you are. You don't have to try to show anybody that. You're, if you're authentic, you love the Lord, you love him enough to just even just say, man, Jesus loves you, guess what? You're the light of the world because somebody's going to see that light. You didn't have to try to do anything, you know. You didn't have to manifest anything. You were just authentic in your walk with the Lord. And that is 
what we're all called to. So I just thank everybody here. We're going to continue this next week. And as we go down and worship, let's honor and glorify the King of Kings. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you. We glorify Jesus, your Son. We're so grateful for the Holy Spirit, thankful for deliverance, thankful for healing, thankful for miracles, thankful for the breakthrough that happens even when we step out of our comfort zone and speak out the good things that you've done. And we realize that nobody threw anything at us. Like, we're, you know, we're okay. We're all right. We're totally secure in you through everything, every storm of life, Lord. Continue to grow and mature us, Lord. In the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ, we just thank you. We want to grow. We want to learn. We want to walk in the fullness of all that you have for our lives. There is hope, Lord, not just for eternity, but for here and now, for the rest of my days, Lord, and for the rest of all of our days in Christ. Thank you for that, God. Thank you for that, Lord. Continue to reveal and show us how to walk in that. In Jesus' name, amen.